Hi guys, my name is Brooke McWilliams and I am in a group with Carson Gwynn, Jessa Huff, Sam Chang, and Callie Henderson and together we decided to do our report on the consumer product segment of the Walt Disney Company. The Walt Disney Company is a multi-million dollar organization that is constantly creating and innovating new ways of generating revenue. In order to do this, they have broken their company down into five segments. One of those segments is the consumer product segment, which is what we chose. Consumer products are defined as merchandise that is sold for private consumption based off of Disney's intellectual property. The company breaks consumer products down further into merchandise licensing, publishing, and retail businesses. And then within this, Disney uses licensing publishing, selling merchandise, and charging for their English tuition centers in China in order to generate revenue. Merchandise licensing contains a wide range of products, so from your basic toys to health and beauty to specialty products, any, any range of products that Disney creates. They have an endless list of licenses, so that includes Mickey and Minnie, recently Star Wars, the Disney Channel, and many more that they use to create products for all ages. Disney Publishing Worldwide uses these licenses to create books, magazines, comic books, and storytelling apps to help generate this revenue. They also operate about 29 different learning centers in different cities in China that they use to teach their Disney English curriculum that they have created. In addition to this, the company has retail stores and online sites as well that they use to help sell these products. They operate about a total of 342 stores worldwide. But because the demand of Disney products is so high, they also offer different agreements to other retailers to sell their products wholesale. The Walt Disney Company is known for the love, magic, and happiness that they spread at their parks, in their movies, and at their resorts. However, it seems some people overlook one aspect of the company that also brings joy to children, and that is their consumer products. In 2015 alone, Disney's revenue from merchandise was $2.54 billion. Their licensing merchant, uh, revenue was $52.5 billion, making them the number one licensor in the world, with a gap of $32.4 billion on the, with the second place company, Meredith. They also beat companies like Warner Brothers, who made a measly $6 billion in licensing, and Major League Baseball teams, who had a $55.5 billion collectively. The category of items that the company creates are limitless, including food, decoration, and beauty products. One can find Disney products at stores like Walmart, where the quality and prices are lower, up to places like jewelry stores, where they spe feature special items like Pandora charm bracelets. The possibilities with the Dis Walt Disney Com Company are endless. However, all the products did not just appear. The consumer side of the Walt Disney Company has moved and morphed and expanded as the years have passed. The following paper will discuss things such as the history of the items, current operations, possible opportunities and competitors, and how the items are presented in the theme parks. Now that you've gotten a chance to hear more about what Disney Consumer Products is, let me give you a little bit of history on the segment. Disney Consumer Products, or DCP, originated from the Walt Disney Enterprises after Walt Disney first licensed the image of Mickey Mouse in 1930. The division had several name changes before they finally settled on the name Disney Consumer Products after they incorporated in the state of California in 1986. In the year 1997, Consumer Products reported operating income of $893 million from its 4,200 licensees, most of which can be attributed to Winnie the Pooh and Mickey Mouse. In the early 2000s, Disney began a series of aggressive acquisitions for high-profile franchises and companies, uh, some of which you'll probably remember, Winnie the Pooh, Marvel Entertainment, The Bear in the Big Blue House, The Muppets, Pixar Studios, and Lucasfilms. 
In the year 2013, Disney had six of the highest earning licensed franchises in the world, with Disney Princesses coming in number one and Star Wars coming in number two. In June of 2015, Disney announced the merger of the declining Disney Interactive segment with the Disney Consumer Products segment. The effects of this merger will be reflected in the 2016 fiscal year financial statements. Disney Consumer Products and Interactive Media operates as a segment under the Walt Disney Company and is broken down into four different business units, those being licensing, retail, games and apps, and content. Within licensing, there are five strategic brand priorities, those being Disney Media, Classics and Entertainment, Disney and Pixar Animation, Disney Princess, Frozen, and Tinkerbell, and finally, Lucasfilm and Marvel. Retail consists of the Disney retail stores worldwide. Games and apps are internally developed, licensed, co-developed, mobile products, and video games. And finally, content consists of the intellectual property and brand creation from Disney. I'll now take you through a brief history of the past year of changes in operating income and revenues for our segment. Starting out at the beginning of 2016 in the first quarter, revenues were $1.9 billion and operating income was $860 million. These were both very large increases from the prior quarter, and that was mainly due to increased licensing from the new Star Wars movie that had just been released. Throughout the second and third quarter of 2016, both revenues and operating income fell, and that was mainly due to decreased sales in the Disney Infinity game console, as well as unfavorable exchange rates and a strengthening U.S. dollar. Finally, rounding out the year for the fourth quarter, revenues had fallen to $1.3 billion and operating income had fallen to $424 million. The new Revenue Recognition Rule, ASC 606, will have a major impact on the way that Disney records revenues. ASC 606 requires that revenues be recognized based on when the contract's performance obligation is satisfied. By looking at the SEC filings for Disney, and particularly their 10K from 2015, it became apparent that Disney recognizes revenues for just the different parts of consumer products in many different ways. For instance, home entertainment and video game sales, the revenues from those are recognized on the later date between the delivery and the date when the product can be sold by the retail stores. Merchandise licensing advances and guaranteed royalty payments are recognized based on the contractual royalty rate when the licensed product is sold by the licensee. And then finally, revenues from branded online and mobile operations are recognized when the services are rendered. So just within consumer products, there are multiple different ways that revenue is recognized. And when ASC 606 goes into account or goes into effect, those all must be recorded at the time when the performance obligation is satisfied. This will change how revenues are seen on the different inco on the income statement, but it will be a very good thing for the company because it will make it comparable with the other segments of the company as well as different companies worldwide, so there is no ambiguity. It can be difficult to pinpoint the competitors of Disney consumer products due to the diversity of the segment. Competitors can range from toy companies such as Hasbro and Mattel to other film companies like Time Warner and Universal. A SWOT analysis of Disney consumer products allows, to, allows us to see what makes them stand out. To start off the strengths, a major strength for Disney is the wide variety of pr products they offer from uh, toys to books to clothing. They also have different product lines through Pixar, Marvel, and Lucasfilms or the Star Wars movies. Um, as a well-known company, Disney also has brand loyalty and recognition as another strength. Next, the weaknesses. The finances of Disney are greatly connected with the 
US and Canadian markets. Um, this is a result of a large amount of their revenues coming from these regions. Um, they also have a weakness similar to other companies in their industry with the seasonality of their product. This means their products sell more around the holiday season or after the new release of a film, so that will change their revenues a little. Um, looking to the future, there are opportunities for Disney. Um, to, as they continue to produce new movies, they'll be able to continue to produce new product lines, just as they've done with the newest movie, Moana. They also have the opportunity through the merger of the consumer products and interactive segments. Um, this allows them to expand their games and apps division. They also have threats that will come into play. Um, the most basic threat being their competition, followed by threats of labor disputes with their in their retailers and licensees. Um, these will affect production, which will then affect their revenues. Uh, Disney must also protect themselves from the unauthorized use of their intellectual property. Um, they may incur high costs in order to do so. Overall, Disney Consumer Products is a strong competitor in its industry. Thank you for taking the time to watch our presentation.